This presentation is brought to you by the City of Greensboro's Economic Development and Business Support Office. There was three things I wanted to hit on today. If, if I was thinking as an entrepreneur, uh, what are the lessons my dad taught me that I missed? And if I had I listened to him, maybe I wouldn't have had that phone call that day. So these are the three things I missed. He taught me a lot, right? Again, John knew my dad. Um, and my dad was a pretty, was a pretty awesome guy to be around. Um, but listen first, make it fun, and do what you say. Okay, I'm going to focus mostly on listen. Okay? He was explaining that to me right here in this picture. Um, and, and, and he actually did. He, he took me from the age of 10 to commercial shoots, photo shoots. I went up to New York City with him when I was, I was younger than 10. I was probably seven. Um, and we flew in. We went to a commercial shoot. There was an NFL Hall of Famer who was the spokesperson for the brand he was working for. Um, I got to meet that guy. wore a Super Bowl ring. He was, played for the Dallas Cowboys, Bob Lilly. And, um, and then uh, the ad agency guys were BBDO, still one of the largest agencies in the world, great agency. Uh, we went to lunch with them and their girlfriends, but we had to go pick them up. And their girlfriends were all soap opera actresses. So I'm like seven, right? So we go on stage and we see all these beautiful ladies and they're filming and it's just bigger than life and they're all treating my dad great because he's, you know, he's paying. And uh, I didn't understand that at that point, but I was like, man, I want to do that. So I was listening to that. Um, I should have been listening to these, but listen first. Make it fun and do what you say. I've worked in two businesses that were entrepreneurial. Um, and so I think, I think for me, what has been successful for me is I've always wanted to be in marketing. Uh, always wanted to. And it's because my dad took me to those TV commercials and it seemed so cool. Um, but my brain also works well for it. And so I'm, I'm suited for my job. I'm suited for taking uh, research anal analysis that people hand me, turning it into a marketing strategy. I'm, I'm, that's, that's what I'm good at. That's what I like to do. And so I think if you can find that thing you're talented at that intersects with something you like and you enjoy doing, that's a, that's a great thing. My wife, I was telling you, is a pharmacist. She loves being a pharmacist. I, I mean, I couldn't imagine being a pharmacist. I don't know how she does that job. That seems terrible to me. But she loves it, right? And she's really good at it. So I think it's the same thing with the business. So you have to just find the thing that you, it, it's hard. I mean, I worked till midnight last night. I got 54 people that, I could, that are helping me, and I'm still working at midnight. And, you know, we're, we're a 30-year-old company. So it's, it's a lot of work. Get the kids to bed and get back to work. So, so it's got to be that, else you're going to burn out. I have friends in companies they love and they do great. I have friends in companies that they're kind of like, eh, and, you know, I watch them, it doesn't work. So, so, and even if you're in a company that's not cool or not fun to you, it, be in the role that's fun. You know, be the sales guy or be the accountant if that's what you're good at or, or the, the product designer or whatever it is. Preparing for this, I, there's not like a bolt of lightning that ever hit me. Never, ever, other than that one guy that took me to breakfast. Um, and said, you, you're not doing a good job, and kind of beat me up. And he was a good friend that, for doing that, but that was it. But I think if you keep true and you believe what you can do and take yourself seriously, I used to not. I used to say, I'm not president of an ad agency. I'm not really. I mean, it's just me and my brother, some other people. Uh, no, I am. I'm CEO of an ad agency, and, and, and we're going to be best in the country. We're going to be the best independent shop in the com country, and I mean that. And so that's another thing. What I just did there is a technique I use a lot. I just told you what I'm doing. And, and so I sort of committed to you that I'm going to build this company. And I made it public. He's filming it. Um, and so, uh, so I find that that helps me all the time. Like I, I ride bikes. And so uh, I'm not sure yet because I'm not going to commit to this today. But I want to do a double century. It's 200 miles in a day. It's a big deal. Um, and when I get ready to do that, I'll tell the whole world. I'm going to do a double century. I'm going to do a double century. I'm going to do a double century. Because otherwise I'm not going to do it. We have, a, uh, we have a pretty um, strong culture on money, but it's an, it's an interesting culture. I have, one of my uncles was the president of Sunbeam, um, and, um, and so he, I was talking to him after my dad passed, and I, said, I made a comment that, well, you know, I'm going to treat my company's money like it's my own, and he said, don't do that. I'm like, huh? What do you mean? I just, you know, I just was coming back from losing it all, and um, he said, that's not how it works. Business is business. Personal is personal. You know, you're not going to take you know, 20, 30 percent of your pay and save it um, in your company, you're going to invest it. It's different. Um, and so we, we all, 
the way we run things, because of our business, different businesses in different ways, we invest heavily in, in subscriptions, services, uh, hardware. We have the best of everything, right? And I believe that as long as we're making money, we should have the best of everything. Now, if we stop making money, we're going to stop having the best of everything. I did want to point out that we're a family business. We're now 55 people, and we're still a family business. It's important to me to be a family business. I'll give you an example. One of the ladies that came from Woodbine in our merger, um, name is Linda Rosa. Um, my cousin works with us, and on the way into work, she slipped, fell, and broke her leg yesterday, two days ago. And I didn't know this until about noon, but Linda got her, took her to the hospital, got her all set up, then took her to the orthopedist, um, and took care of all of it, and then sent me a note and said, hey, by the way, your cousin broke her leg, and I took care of it, right? So that's family, right? She, she's a brand new employee. Um, I've only known her for two months, and here she is jumping right in and doing what, you know, what I would do for my cousin. So that's important to us. It's not easy being a family business. There's problems with it. Um, you can imagine with the, with the two of us, we've caused lots of problems. We almost lost our mom's house. What we do in advertising, good advertising, is creative problem solving, okay? Um, so my background is engineering, and problem solving is what I went to college for, and this stuff just, it just makes sense, right? It's not magic, although we make it look like magic. It's all around strategy and asking good questions. So we have this big process called Rego, and, and, it's, and it's, it's all about review, rethink, and recreate, right? So we have to, we have to listen, and learn first, then we have to uh, come up with a strategy, and then that strategy informs our creative, and our creative goes and gets it. People ask you, what do you think about this idea? How would I market it? All you have to do is this. Well, who's your target audience? Who's your prime prospect? What's their problem you're trying to solve? Tell me about your product and why is it better than anybody else's? And then how are you going to make it interesting and exciting?